What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the next phase collectibles and games podcast where we talk about Pokemon, other trading cards, all kinds of collectibles, video games. We do the whole lot when it comes to pop culture, trading cards, and having fun, guys. I'm Travis with TCG Funhouse. Whoop! Who are you? And I'm Matt from Matt. The Broke Nerd. I, mean, I, did the, I don't I did know if it's really from The Broke Nerd. You are The Broke Nerd. I am the broke nerd. It's right. not really from the broke nerd. That was a weird right. thing to say. Yeah, I was from the broke nerd. You have given birth to yourself. I'm, this I'm is weird. Myself. Let's move forward. Okay. I come from me. <laughs> All right, guys. All right, so today's going to be a really crazy, like, kind of a, a, a spicy episode because we're going to talk about um, being, what it means to be a content creator in the Pokemon community, and then also... What just some turns that Pokemon has taken in general over the past six to seven months, and is it still fun to be a Pokemon collector, content creator, player, anything about uh, surrounded around Pokemon? We're just going to talk about it today. Uh, A lot of spicy takes. You might hear some stuff that you don't like. You might hear some stuff that makes a lot of sense, and we're going to go from there. Plus, we have our rants going on today, and a couple of questions from you guys over on Instagram and Twitter. Matt, what are you most excited to talk about today? I don't even know. I don't even know. Honestly, I'm just excited for all of it. It's going to be great. We yeah. were just chatting a little bit before, and it got me super pumped for everything. It gets the blood going, you know? Like, you're, yeah. like it's yeah. just like, oh, yes, we, I'm ready to talk some, about it. We had some heated topics that we were talk, talking about, and, the, you know, the yep. passions just start flowing, and you, you're going crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so true. So true. All right, so... Um, if you guys are watching on YouTube, please smash that subscribe button and hit that like if you love Pokemon cards. And if you're here on Spotify, we appreciate you. You can find us anywhere you can find your podcast fix. Let's go ahead and dive right into our first topic, Matt. We're going to be talking about what it actually means and how it feels right now to be a Pokemon content creator. I know you used to post YouTube videos uh, very frequently, uh, and then you started focusing on other things like your Pokemon business and stuff, but let's go ahead and uh, what has changed for you over the past six, seven months? Uh, I mean, I think we all know what's really changed the most. It's been the prices of cards. Insanity. Not not just like singles or like not singles and stuff like that. Those are, those are mostly consistent. They've been going up, but I mean, uh, the packs... The packs are nuts. Sealed product. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's it's just tough to find stuff to even crack open on YouTube anymore. It really is. It really is. And talking about um, cracking packs on YouTube, something else has changed on YouTube, too, and that is, you remember the good old days? I think we both started our channels around mm-hmm. the same time, right? Like two years ago, like 20 months ago, right around that time frame, we yeah. both kind of hit the streets on this Pokemon content creation before the boom. So we're both before the boom content creators here. Yep. And don't you remember the good old days of when you could just open up like one elite trainer box and like people were excited for you and you were excited and you were like, this is is fantastic. Oh, oh." like, do you remember (laughs) those days, man? It was great. I mean, you could, you could even take like when the more Pico and Snorlax pin collections came out, Yes. you could, you could open up one of those things and it was a great video. Yeah. It was a great great. video. People watched it. People commented. So the landscape has completely changed. Completely changed. Mm. And um, there's been a lot of conversation in the Pokemon community about this. Uh, People like, I'm just going to drop a couple of names here. People like Frosted Caribou, Randolph Pokemon, Yizzy, and uh, some of the other friends here in the Pokemon community that we have have been talking about this recently. And it's that some of the bigger content creators have really raised the bar to try to, I don't want to say to try to keep the smaller creators down, but they raised the bar in the way Mm -hmm. that they were filming and opening stuff um, that almost puts a lot of things out of reach for us, you know? Um, It's something that's, I don't want to say it's bothering me because it doesn't, you know, you got to adapt. You have to learn to adapt in order to succeed, which is something that I'm trying to work on here. Mm -hmm. Um, but you, you know, the big dollar signs, you know, like $1 million opening, $250,000 opening, um, 300 booster packs being opened, you know, like these are the thumbnails. These are the clickbait type <laughs> thumbnails true. that are that are getting the views, you know. So opening a single ETB, opening six or seven booster packs no longer generates any interest whatsoever. And we've pretty much, as contrary content creators have come down to we just need to make the content because we enjoy and like the content right so like what are your thoughts on these big time youtubers um doing these massive openings and very expensive openings 
Yeah. Well, kind of like we talked about, you and I have talked about a few times before. I think it does definitely change the dynamic of YouTube entirely for creating content. Mostly 100%. YouTube. Mostly YouTube. Now, like, it's it's difficult to gain a lot of views on openings where you are just opening up a few packs. And, like, that's just the honest truth of it. Like, we've, we've both tried to open up a few packs at a time on videos, and it, they've yeah. tanked. But... Yeah. You know when we when we do these big openings and stuff like that, it, statistically our views go up. I mean that's just that's what's happening now. Luckily for all of us, there are other places that we can we can create content right. now. Right. You know, so if you if you are looking to do like small pack openings, you can go over to TikTok, YouTube Shorts, Instagram Reels. Those are the places that you got to open up the single packs now. Correct. Yeah, I, I agree with you 100. percent And you know it's it's. Again, I don't want to say that it's the bigger content creators holding small content creators down, Agreed. but let's go ahead and take a look at it from a different scope, right? So let's say that we are one of those big content creators. And by big content creators, I'm talking about, let's say, 500,000 plus subscribers, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I would consider that a big YouTuber, correct? 500,000 plus? Pretty, pretty sizable, pretty sizable. You can pretty much make a living on YouTube at that point with that many subscribers. Oh, yeah. So oh, yeah. you're a full-time content creator, right? Pokemon mm -hmm. explodes. It just it goes it it's going crazy. Like it's it's trending. You know, celebrities are coming into it and all that kind of stuff. And here you are, you know, you're the linchpin of the Pokemon community for three past three years, four years, five years, yeah. and now you just have this influx, this huge influx of people that are just like, hey, I want to do what you're doing. I'm gonna do that. You know, it's it's competitive. It is always competitive. It doesn't matter if you want to be you know the best server at your job it's the exact yeah. same thing they no, they want to be the best content creator that they can be so the one thing that they have the ability to do is kind of say i'm going to make this this extreme content that not everybody can make because it's going to keep me in the limelight it's going to keep me in the forefront of the pokemon community to where otherwise if i was just doing the same stuff i've been doing for the past two three years i'm going to end up falling down the chart and these other guys who are going to start doing that other stuff are going to start surpassing me. And they're mm -hmm. going to start taking over, being the face of the Pokemon community. And they're like, no, 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 I'm going to I'm gonna edge this off a little bit here. And I'm going to do these bigger, more grandiose openings type of a thing, right? I mean, if you yeah. were in that position, wouldn't you possibly potentially do the same thing? You totally take advantage of it. Totally take advantage of it. I mean, like, even even before the big boom, I know you and I, we both made videos where we tried to open up a lot of things. Yeah. You know, I, I did videos where coming. I tried to crack open an entire booster box and an ETB and other stuff in one video. It was a long, yeah. long video, but... Sometimes too long, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, nobody wants to watch this face for that long. It's it's terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, that's that's how it is, like... The more you can open, the more eyes are going to watch that video. At least the it's more true. you say you're going to open. And that's where or, the clickbait or, comes in. Or the more value Or has. the crazier. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, the value. The that's what I was going to say. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be 3,000 booster packs, but it could be first edition base set. You yeah. know, because like Leonhardt's video. I'm opening a $25,000 pack. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And that's just and that's the that's headline the, that, that, that people see. That was the see. high end value of that pack. So... It's oh, and it always is that. It always is that, right? It goes yeah. back to people saying, "Oh my gosh, I pulled this card. It's worth twenty thousand dollars." That's and at a PSA like, ten. Th that's at a PSA ten that you really need to pray at this point that your card is going to get because it's been sitting in that pack on that shelf, tossed around for twenty years. Yeah, you're likely not going to get a PSA ten, so you can't pull a card that's raw and say this is my ten thousand dollar card but that's like the stuff that people are doing and mm -hmm. that's what people click on it's it's become so clickbaity you know and it's it's really funny because they say in order i don't want to say to hack the youtube youtube algorithm but they say like mr beast says this directly you just want to be honest with your people you don't necessarily want to be clickbaity you don't yep. want to be exaggerating right yep. so like you like want to have his, an honest clickbait Exactly. That's what it is right there. His his success is honest clickbait. So yep. his clickbait is I'm going to give all of my friends a hundred thousand dollars, 
And then he does. And then he gives three of his friends $100,000. So, yes, you clicked on it, and you're like, this is crazy. And then he does it. But then it. he does it. Yeah. yeah. So it, it, so you can't call him out and be like, oh, oh, oh you just clickbaited me, Mr. Beast. You yeah. know? Well, but I feel the, like we've... Go ahead. Watching another YouTuber, a favorite of mine, Cypher PK. He does Fortnite videos. I know. That might be kind of yeah. weird. You know, an adult watching Fortnite videos. <laughs> I'm sorry. I like it. I enjoy it. I've never it. gotten Don't into Fortnite. Me. I just Don't haven't gotten me. into it at all. <laughs> It's fun. But, so he does clickbaity videos, and he's become very popular recently. Yep. And he said in his videos, he said, I love doing clickbait videos, but I make sure that the response to the clickbait that I posted is in the first 30 seconds of the video. You so if I post to, something clickbaity, the answer to that, like the question or the caption, right away. is right there so that way you know it was clickbait for a reason. Yeah. And, and, and I think what a lot of people don't realize, too, and, and the Pokemon community catches a lot of flack for this, but it's just the content creator's community. It just is. Yeah. Everybody wants to be the best content creator. Everyone because does. Because you want to you want to grow the most. You want to be able to make this your full-time career. You just mm-hmm. do. Everybody does. It's Every single dream. person who is listening to this podcast right now that has been a content creator whether it's one video or a hundred videos it doesn't matter at some point or the other you want to quit your job and do it full time you just do and again it comes down to something we talked about last time a little bit and there's a lot of jealousy involved and stuff like that but one thing i do disagree with with the content creation is the clickbait stuff because we have come down to i pulled a twenty five thousand dollar card no you did not you pulled a eight hundred dollar card in the current condition that it's in Mm -hmm. so yes you could send it in and end up getting a beckett black label first edition base set charizard and have it be worth that much that'd be crazy but more than likely right you're now, gonna get like a psa 8 when it's fresh out of the pack maybe a 7 correct correct so you effectively have pulled a 800 hundred dollar card not a thirty thousand dollar card so that's where we kind of have a little bit of an issue i think um, when they talk about values and all that kind of stuff, but yeah, and so, I don't know. That's, that, that's just me. I, it, it bothers me a little bit when that kind of stuff happens because I feel like I need to do that in order to keep up. Yeah, you no, know, I think we all. I gotta feel start that putting way. dollar signs on my thumbnail. I gotta start putting outrageous statements on my mm-hmm. on my title, so that way people just click on the dang video. Yeah. You know, because otherwise it's not gonna get watched. And I mean, you've experienced exactly. that personally in your videos. That's what we talked yes. about. You know. Yep. And so that's why some of your some of your video thumbnails are I'm opening up an entire case of Pikachu yeah. V boxes because you felt like you had to do that to keep up with the community. Absolutely. Because nobody's gonna click on my video if I'm opening up one case or I'm sorry, one box mm-hmm. or two boxes. And we started out we so one of my segments when we first started making YouTube content was called product showcase. I remember. And we would we would do a product showcase on one product so we would go to the store <laughs> we would buy <laughs> one those. orbital box we would buy one alakazam v box and we would do a product showcase on it it was you know an eight minute video a 10 minute video yeah. but it was just here's the product here's what you get inside we're gonna rip the packs and see what happens yep. there's nothing I, if i did that nowadays nobody would click on it and i'm holding this one box i'm like hey come watch me open this one box unless you pull People the legendary charizard yeah well he but then your headline and your thumbnail change they go That's from true. product showcase and alakazam v box to Very i pulled true. the rainbow pikachu from vivid voltage and that's front and center mm-hmm. you know so yes i think there's this big divide in the community in general and that is there's people who want to be a part of the community that just enjoy it, want to have fun with it, want to collect it, want to play the games, and they want nothing to do with the dollar signs. They want nothing to do with the clickbait titles, nothing to do with the huge openings, Mm -hmm. none of that stuff. They just want their straightforward Pokemon content, and they're going to enjoy it. But if you're, ma- but that's 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 the small portion, I think. Yeah. And if you're making your content for that portion of the community, that's fine. But just understand, you're never going to explode. And I feel like I've spent the first year content creating, making it making it for those people, right? Yeah. And in order for me to grow, I'm gonna have to start to expand and do things that maybe my current community 
don't really like that much and that's talk about values do bigger openings and do clickbaity headlines and click here it's the only way that i'm going to grow my youtube channel and that's a fact what are your thoughts yeah no i'm i'm the same way so i'm going to re start recording for youtube again i know it's crazy it's crazy it's been a little while but well, dude, a little rusty. slow down slow down <laughs> <laughs> but, so we're going to start recording again and we're going to start posting but Perfect. My, also, I mean, like, to be perfectly honest, one of my favorite things about Pokemon is being able to talk about the value and the worth of the cards, which cards I feel like are underrated, yeah. which cards I feel like are overrated, you know, Charizard. Shh, don't tell him when I said it, but, you know, but seriously, a <laughs> little bit. It's facts, dude. Come on. A little bit overrated. It's, o it's only worth money because somebody tells us it's worth money. Yep. Overall, they're not the best cards. He's not the best Pokemon. It's very rarely ever used in decks. It's just not. It, it's true. But, I mean, like, full art trainers, we talked about this. I mean, Gorgeous. I've, I've said for so long, for two years, I've said these are so underrated. So underrated. Yep. These cards are beautiful. The artwork is amazing. Not the rainbows. Those are those are cool, but the rainbows are ugly. I agree. I, I think the ones from like Sword and Shield are a lot nicer. I like the style of them better than like from like Sun and Moon stuff like that. But yeah, a lot of sparkles. Yeah, yeah, those are great. But the full art, the colors shows. on them are amazing. The artwork is beautiful, and yep. The, I mean, like yeah, the waifus are. are picking up in price right now and they're they're getting some of the love they deserve but i mean what about the Monday, other guys just i mean hop, the Skyla, baby that hop full art trainer Sorry, that Saturday. thing is awesome it looks it's great dope. yes but it's a two dollar card it's a two dollar yep. card and all it's day. so sad two dollars all day <laughs> it's so sad i feel i feel so bad for my guy hop dude i but if we're being full disclosure he's the worst you know slash rival we've ever had in a game well I mean, he's not even supposed to be a rival really i mean like yes technically he is he's, he's your buddy he's your buddy you know? he's your best friend yeah. who's like pretending to be a rival but really he's like dude i totally support you and your dreams and your goals and i hope you win everything yeah. but also <laughs> i'm your rival <laughs> He's a snowflake, bro. He's a snowflake. He and that, that's he what he does. He's, you know, and it, it always blows my mind when I play the game because I'm like, you just got done telling me how bad you were. I just stomped you. Yep. And then you just walked right in and beat the gym leader, like, with easily. So it's like, what what's happening? Where's the disconnect here? Why are you so bad against me? Yep. But then you just go in and you get all the badges, like, the exact same time I do. Like, come on. Yep. Come on! No, it's crazy. But, and then they're, like, praising his name in the game, too. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. we're we're getting sidetracked. We're getting sidetracked because we're we're going right, to the right. back story. Reel it back in. Reel it back in. <laughs> okay. We don't need to go to the right. backstory. Talk about his mom. You know where his dad is. That's you know, a whole other whole episode. Other Two hour episode. Who about is mom. his brother? <laughs> really? <laughs> really? Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Let's let's move on. Let's move on. <laughs> let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. So. Um, but yeah, to talk about content creation, guys, it's it's a it's a very it's a very tough thing, and it is you know the days and and just to rehash it a little bit, the days of opening up one collection box for are over unless you're doing it for fun. If you're a content creator that is only trying to have fun and just put out content, all power to you. I really hope you succeed. I hope you enjoy every single time you post a video. Seriously. I will support you because I love that thought and I love that, you know, that gumption of being a Pokemon mm -hmm. fan and a Pokemon person. But if you're trying, just a full disclosure statement right here. If you are trying to make content creation a full-time job, or if you are trying to make something Pokemon related a full-time job, that is not going to get you where you need to go, and people don't want to hear that. They just don't. That's true. So, if, I, if, I can, if I can give an honest recommendation, my job in the past has been marketing. That's That's been my life for the past quite a few years. Nice. If you guys really want to know where the best place to make content is, if you're gonna, if you if you're on a budget and you can only open up a few yep. packs at a time, it's not YouTube. It is not YouTube. Don't go there. It's not. It's not worth it. You gotta go TikTok, Instagram Reels, or YouTube Shorts. And honestly, TikTok and Instagram Reels are gonna be the best options for you. It's the future, if you guys want to see you know? some it's, good it's, content, well, it's the current. Yeah, if you guys want to see some good content of like great uh, TikTok creators, you can look at Alex Hodges or Nat Shivam. Yep, great guy. Both of them make fantastic content, 
and they're both Pokemon related and they're, they're great. So if you want to get started making Pokemon content on a budget, look up those two guys. They're amazing. Great people. They've both made they've both made several several TikToks, you mm-hmm. know, probably dozens and dozens of TikToks without spending a dollar. Oh, easily. You know, and it's, easily. It's just the personalities. This is what I do. This is my journey. Blah blah blah. And they they have both amassed a pretty good following over there. Um, and I've made the mistake on TikTok too. While we're talking about content creation, um, if you're going to go to TikTok, I don't recommend just opening pack after pack nah. after pack because I've I've posted. You know, probably 40 plus packs on TikTok. Just here's a booster pack. Here's a booster pack. Under 60 seconds. Here's a booster pack. People don't care. They want the stories. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't even have to face the camera. You know, you can do it just facing outward. They want the journey that you're on. You know, yes, you can open packs, but if you're just doing pack, 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 you're not going to gain the following that way either. So be creative. That's my that's my two cents. Be creative. Tell a story. But it's it's the future, guys. It's it's the current. But it's in its infancy state. It's the future. TikTok, Reels, short attention span, 30-second videos, 60-second videos. You know, it's Vine has created a monster, mm-hmm. and it's not going to stop. It's going to keep going because attention spans are going to get shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter as time yep. goes by. Don't put it off until you've tried it. Just because you're going to be a YouTube creator doesn't mean you should quit everything else. Saying that, saying that, make sure you guys go follow TCG Funhouse and The Broke Nerd over on TikTok <laughs> and Instagram so you can catch our reels and our short videos that we post. They are swell. Every so often. <laughs> and now it is rant time here on the Next Phase Podcast, guys, and I'm going to go first. Normally I let Matt open the Sorry. door Sorry. with these rants, but I'm going to go Take first it. today, and I'm going to tell you guys, going back to, we mentioned it a little bit in the, in, in the, in the past segment, I am so frustrated with the printing quality on Pokemon, the, the, the Pokemon International Company, the last, oh, I don't know, probably six months or so, it has been so bad. Do you know how many Eevee VMAX promos, Charizard V promos from the ETBs that you can, like, can't even see one of the sides because it is so off centered? Like, people give those values $10,000, $8,000, even like $800 for the Charizards. Again, that's for Gym Men 10. The cards are so off-centered and so printed poorly lately, I'm beyond frustrated. So my rant is towards the Pokemon company themselves. Please do a better job at quality control on printing your cards, your full arts, your rainbows in particular, because the edging is so bad, and I can't even get tens on anything that I pull anymore. So please get it fixed. I'm a little bit done. I'm done. Right, I'm done. You sure? You sure? Floor's yours. Yes. I, I'm just, good. I just want to throw in. I gotta, I gotta drink this water. <laughs> you do it. You do it. I just got thrown a little segment though. Just to, I 100 percent agree. It. It's just it's trash. It's trash a lot of times. So bad. I, I feel like half of Champions Path printing though was solid. It was spot on. I had great centering on things. They're beautiful. And so what I've noticed, it's the very, the very, very, very first print run is always solid. solid. Everything from there off yep. falls Then it's apart. just garbage. It's like, they, it's like I'm pretty yep. sure while I was going through the line, people are like, the first couple printings are like, oh yeah, beautiful, beautiful, great, 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 great. Individual yep. cards, nah, that one's trash, get that out. And then second print, they're like, oh, all right, I'm a little tired of that. All right, yeah, that's fine, that's fine, <laughs> whole wave through. We're, we're, whole print run. <laughs> we're going to get to the point, yeah, the, the guys at the factory. No, it looks, it looks great. It looks, you can't even see the names. Yeah, What's it's happening? Fine. It looks great. great. Just put it in. That was a Charizard, right? Yeah, it's good. But like, through. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to get to the point, though, where like first wave stuff is just going to be worth more. Like It kind of already is for him. Almost like the Japanese. Um, because the, Almost like the Japanese yeah. cards. When the first yeah, edition the first... stuff comes out, it's worth more. Then you have the second edition. Yep. And the, like the next wave. It's you like know. crap. And it's basically the same thing. They just don't put first edition yeah. stamps on it, you know? But it's basically the but exact same thing. All right, all right yeah, what's yeah, your yeah. rant, man? What do you got here? What do you all got? Right. Let's go. So my Hit wife me. and I went to Gallenberg, Tennessee, for our anniversary this last weekend. It was super fun. Nice. We it. had a blast. It's awesome. But we went to a local shop while we were there. And the local shop, I mean, it's a very touristy town. So you kind of go in expecting things to be overpriced because it, it is a yes. big tourist town. Everything's overpriced. That's all it is. Uh, but yep. the guy was great. One of the best shops I've been to in a long time. Friendliest customer service I've ever seen. Nice. But while we were there, all of the sealed stuff is way overpriced. It's He has it at market value right now, so not even retail. It's market value. So Vivid Voltage, market, like yep. 80 bucks an ETB, like it's crazy. 
And you know, I could deal with that. Single prices were amazing. Got some great vintage singles from them. It was awesome. But some people came in nice. from the Pokemon community and they were ranting and raving about how awful the prices were there. Just like yelling at the guy right. because they were just furious that his prices were so high. And like, I, I get it, I get being upset, but he said, I was talking to the owner, and he said that they've come in plenty of times before, and they just look for the retail prices. They want retail prices because he's seen them flipping the products in the community. And that's yep. what they do. He had one guy yep. who came up to him, got up in his face and said, meet me outside, these prices are ridiculous. We're gonna fight, and we're gonna, we're gonna get insane. this worked out. So he's like, so I went outside and the guy was just like, I can't believe you're not selling these at retail prices and just like talk to him about it. And he's like, I'm trying to make a living off of this. And he's like, yeah, me too. Me oh, too, dude. Come on. And the guy come basically on. just flat out told him, he's like, Legal. I want you to sell this to me at retail price because I know you get it cheaper and I want to go sell it at a higher price so that I can provide for my family. And like, I, I get the hustle, yep. I get the hustle, but the, the card shops yep. also need to make a profit too. And he's been struggling. He was you shut know, we, down all last we, year during 2020 because Gatlinburg was pretty much shut down. Yes, so it he's was. trying to make up for yep. it. But we talked about that a little bit last time. You know, it's it's, dude. The 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 stores are getting less product. They need to charge a little bit more to stay open. And by the way, they're doing it legally. Mm -hmm. They have their license. They dealt with the distributors. Yep. You know, they have the ability to do this, and they actually are paying their bills with this money. Uh, you know, a lot of people, whatever the reason is that they're flipping this product, if someone, no one is going to profit off of me. They're not going. If I was a local LGS store owner, I'm not going to sell to a flipper who comes inside and no says, like, I want an entire case of trying to pay TTPs. It's not happening. I'm going to tell you no, because I want to sell them to the people that are going to enjoy them and they're going to open them. And I will give them to you at retail price if you open them right in front of me right now. Let's go. Let's no. do this. I'm not going to let you leave with an entire case of ETB so you can go put it on Facebook Marketplace for six times as much and not pay taxes on it and not do what you're supposed to do legally and right for the Pokemon community. It's not going to happen. True. Same. Cool. All right. So we have more conversation on Pokemon in general coming up about how fun it is. Like, is, is the fun completely sapped? We're going to talk about that next coming right now. All right, guys. There has been a lot of chatter in the Pokemon community lately about stuff that's just destroying Pokemon and it's not fun anymore. So we're going to give you guys our opinions on the situation, what's fun for us, what's not fun for us, and see if you guys agree. Matt, tell me what you got. All right, awesome. So I I stopped doing Pokemon content creation for a while there for about four months, I guess. Got laid off, things were tough, but just because I stopped content creating doesn't mean that I wasn't around for this crazy boom. I was still way into Pokemon, and yeah. honestly, like we we weren't making any money during that time. It was just total drain on our bank account. We got down to like seventy three dollars. It was crazy, crazy. crazy we stuff, have nothing, man. but it didn't mean that I didn't get to still enjoy Pokemon. You know, absolutely. Watching we still talk from time to time. Even. Yeah, we did. I still message you because honestly, Travis is one of my best friends in the Pokemon community. It's Good awesome. Stop. He's amazing. Stop. Oh, you had yeah. to, you had to say in the Pokemon community. You couldn't just leave it at best friends, <laughs> whatever, bro. Okay. I had to, I had to get really specific. I had to get really specific. <laughs> I have a very large friend base, you know, because I'm just you're, you're just so popular. I'm just kidding. There's, so there's cool. like there's like hardly anyone. <laughs> Travis is just one of my <laughs> own friends. All right, Go but <laughs> continuing go. on to what I'm saying. <laughs> Sorry, Travis is just so great. I just I can't stop talking about how great he is. <laughs> I clipped that. Instagram reel right there. Perfect. You guys will see it up there later. Make sure you follow him. Because <laughs> he's great. <laughs> Alright. All right. So, during that time, I was able to still continue on with Pokemon and stuff. Didn't have much to open because stuff started getting really expensive really fast and it was hard to find. So, I was able to continue like playing the games, was able to chat with the community, and just still post Pokemon memes. If you guys ever follow me on Instagram... Yes. Yeah, there's a lot of Pokemon memes on there, and I was still able to post stuff on there and find some yeah, hilarious the best Pokemon stuff. memes, for real. I, I, do, I do meme analysis. I don't really know what I was going awesome. for there, but, you know, meme analysis to find great memes. It's fun. It's true. It's true. You have much better memes than me. I like to create my own memes. Yeah. Now, they never go out there because, you know, they're not viral content already. But, like, dude, they're hilarious. I'm just going to say they that. Are. They're very they are. niche, very hilarious. I share but a lot you, of you got story. those. You got those widespread memes that, like, everybody mm -hmm. loves. Yeah, I look for those because I, I feel like they're just fun to share. 
But I mean, there's tons of other ways that you can get involved in Pokemon content creation without opening up packs and spending every penny that you yep. have. I mean, you can you can stream the games. We we just got a capture card, so we're gonna start streaming Pokemon Voice. Sword uh, on YouTube or maybe Twitch. I don't really know. We're gonna start streaming soon, playing the games. We're gonna start streaming, playing other games, things like that. And then you can just collect singles too. I've, I've collected a lot of singles. Started picking stuff up. I was just showing you, Travis, some of the stuff that we picked up Dude, you got just this weekend. We, yeah, we got some great stuff. We got a Dark Venusaur winner stamped E series so dope. card. Uh, You're shipping that to me, right? gallery. Oh yeah, yeah, sure, sure, definitely, <laughs> definitely. But this is a, this is a crazy prize card. Got it for fun, just because it's it's something I can do that's not opening up packs when See, I can't and find that's anything. Your, that's your key right there. You said doing this for fun. Pick that up for fun. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? You you have to find find your fun niche. You know, find what's fun for you. Yep. So. You know, we talked about in our first segment how the Pokemon has changed. Pokemon content creation has changed. On YouTube, it's changed. On social, on all social media platforms, it has changed. It's it just has. If you're not having fun anymore, find what makes it fun for you. If makes if you know if buying a Dark Venusaur Winter Stamp is what is fun for you, then go do that. Stop worrying about what everyone else is doing. Stop worrying about what content has become what all this stuff has but if you don't like it and i'm really not trying to be harsh here I'm, I'm trying so hard not to be harsh but if you don't like the the evolution that has happened it's not going to change and all you're going to do is run into a brick wall over and over and over again and you're just going to make yourself more and more unhappy so find what makes you happy so if you know going to your local hobby stores and finding rare singles makes you happy, then that's what you need to do. If opening, <clears throat> you know, one collection box on YouTube makes you happy, then that's what you need to do. You just need to temper your expectations on, on what's going to happen and what the response is going to be. Um, so when, in terms of having fun, I have battled tons and tons of like demons inside the Pokemon community because I do take a lot of pride in my content. Um, and I still love making it. You know, it's a huge family thing for us. It has really mm -hmm. brought me closer to my son. It's brought me closer to my wife. My wife was not interested in it whatsoever when we started <laughs> it at all. And then now, like, she's excited. Like, when she's, dude, she's checked targets and Walmarts more than I do. <laughs> you know? That's how I Like, she's is. all in on it. And we have found you know our little section that makes it fun but you have to adapt because there was a while there where i was not having fun you know i was that person smashing my head against the table because i would make three videos a week and none of them would do well you know it'd be 100 views it would be 120 views and it would just you know i i didn't realize that my content was the issue um, you know, and it, not necessarily that my content was the issue, but it was just not what people wanted to see, you know? Mm -hmm. um, even though I thought that the video quality was great, was great and the video quality, you know, the, the conversation was good, the jokes were funny, and it's just, it wasn't enough to get the views that I wanted to get. And what my fun portion is, is trying to figure that out. You know, I'm still trying to figure that out, man. Some of my close friends, the Pokemon community, have just soared past me with the growth. And I'm like, hey, uh, you guys you guys forgot me back here. Like, I'm, mm -hmm. come on, we came, we came in together, you know. Like, Throw me a rope. But like, Throw me a rope. <laughs> now that I look at it a little bit differently, um, I have a lot more fun, you know. I And, and I really hope that you guys still enjoy the videos because I still give everything I have into them. Um, but the fun for me is trying to figure out how to succeed being a Pokemon YouTuber because that's what I want to do and open my Pokemon business. But, you know, the fun part for me is is taking that, trying to adapt and trying to make different kinds of content so I can grow instead of beating my head against that wall like I did before. You know, it's like, I, I hate these clickbait titles. I hate that such and such is doing this. I hate that they're doing that. You know, oh, it's so not cool when they, you know, like we talked about uh, a, a little bit ago, you know, ripping and snipping the cards. Like people were up in uproar about that for a while. If that's what that guy likes to do, then just let him do it. Who freaking cares? It's not your job or my job to tell anybody how to enjoy Pokemon. Mm -hmm. It's just not. 
You need to figure out what you enjoy about Pokemon and you need to find the content creators that fit that niche. Stop trying to, to change others because they're not going to change, especially if it's been working. You know, if, yeah. if what they're doing is controversial, controversial, that's a hard word to say. It's hard to say, but especially when we've been talking for the whole podcast. Oh, oh I'm sorry. No, I'm no, sorry. no, no not, not you specifically. Like, just saying, oh, like, when no, you when we've been taking all the time? conversating, <laughs> <laughs> we've been conversating the whole time, you know. That's okay. You just keep going, yeah, Travis. Yeah, just you keep just going. Been this, way too long. This is a TCG Funhouse podcast. So, as it was coming out of my mouth, I realized <laughs> that it was sounding like, oh, man, hey, I was you like, know, you I was like, have been dang. talking the whole time. Jeez. Bro, shots fired live on mic. <laughs> I didn't mean it that way. I swear. <laughs> No, I get. I, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Your, your mouth gets foamy. Yeah, you yeah. know, you get into it. But I guess, I guess, I, I was, you know, I was not very clear in my statement until towards the end there. Um, so what I would say is, people enjoy Pokemon however they want to enjoy Pokemon, mm -hmm. and it's not my job, your job, or anyone's job to tell them whether they're right or wrong. And I think that's one of the big things that's happening in the community right now. We have these different sections of people fighting. When if everyone would just do what they want to do and have fun and ignore what everyone else has to say, it'd be so much better, man. What are your thoughts on that? I agree. I agree. I think. I mean, honestly, guys, let's 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 just put it flat out. I mean, it's Pokemon. Yes. Like it's a it's a it's made for fun. It's a show. It's a game. It's a trading card game. It's toys. I mean, they, like all of those things are for fun. All of those yes. things are for fun. They're not for... It's something to help you escape from the hard times in your life. Those four months that... So why bring them into Those it? four months that I was laid off and didn't have anything going for me, I was extremely depressed, and the only thing that kept me sane were my family and Pokemon, to be perfectly yeah. honest. And so Dope. now that, like, getting out of that huge funk that I was in, major depression, like... Pokemon is bringing me so much joy. It's helping me get out of it and and be super positive again. That's partially why I wasn't able to make yeah. content for a while because I was not feeling super positive. So I want to I want to piggyback off what you just said, okay? And positivity, okay? So um, if you guys don't know, so uh, Not Shivam is a TikTok creator, Instagram creator. Uh, he's on Twitter as well. So he tweeted. A couple of weeks ago, I think it might have been last week, he tweeted last week, you know, he straight out said, I never told anybody that I was a positive person and I always keep it real 100%. And he does. He does. 100% fact. He will never sugarcoat nothing. Mm -hmm. And I love him for that. But my response was, and, and people loved my response to this, and I was surprised. I was not expecting it. I told him that there's a huge another problem in the Pokemon community is disingenuous positivity. Right? Mm -hmm. So fake positivity, BS positivity, because people expect you to just be positive all the time about anything and everything, whether it's right or wrong or indifferent. They want you to have a smile. And there's the pressure, right? There's just so much pressure that when you're a content creator or on social media platforms that you have to be politically correct and say the nicest, sweetest things all the time. Mm -hmm. And it is exhausting. It turns me off. It turns a lot of people off. And I understand that some people really are that positive because there are. There are a lot of people who just are positive all the time about things and they are 100% genuine with it. Yeah. But when the expectation becomes that everybody needs to be that positive... It's just exhausting. It's like a big weight on your shoulders, man. No, it it is. Like I, I'm normally a very positive person. I like to you are. I like to have a very positive outlook on things, give people the benefit of the doubt, sometimes to a fault, you know? I right. mean we, we've talked about this before. That's why you still you know? talk to me. I get it. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that's why Travis is one of my best <laughs> friends, you know. It's easy to forgive. Easy to forgive. <laughs> No, but but I mean, like, <sighs> even when I'm going through a really hard time, you still feel that pressure to to put on the the face of positivity. I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I can put on the face of positivity, but it doesn't mean that like things aren't really tough. Yep, and and people need to realize that too when they're leaving comments on posts and when they're leaving comments on videos. You don't know what that person's going you don't. through. 
You know, they could they could have had the worst week of their life, and the one solace they have is making a Pokemon video, and then the first thing you do is shat all over it when <laughs> once it hits the wavelengths. Like, like just understand what's happening before you do that sort of yeah. thing. Yeah, you know, like if uh, honestly, let's go back to what all of our parents taught us. If you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all, unless it's Thanks. helpful criticism. Yes, but I mean, if you're being to, real, you're being it, real. It has to be. It has to be a real, helpful criticism where you're trying to be kind to the person. Because there's no reason to just be a jerk, ever. It's true. Unless somebody else 100%. is like being a bully, then then have at it. I mean. Oh okay, yeah. Well, no, well, no, maybe not have at it. You but reap what you sow at that maybe, point. Maybe you know not have I mean? at it. We don't want to like encourage people like going out against people who are bullies. <laughs> you know, it could be dangerous for everyone. But don't, bullying don't be like is that bad. guy up in Gatlinburg and invite him outside. Yeah, don't, don't, don't be that don't guy. Don't be that guy. And don't be the guy that antagonizes that guy. <laughs> Get him. Get him. Yeah. yeah. No, and it's just, you know, you can be positive. I think sometimes it's misinterpreted, you know, what, what, what being positive in the Pokemon community means. You know, everything does not always need to be sunshine and rainbows. You don't always need to be blowing smoke up, you know, people's you know what's. But just being yourself and you know doing things positive and supporting people is is all that you need to do you know watching my video at tcg funhouse is enough support that that you can give me if you want to support us just watch a video that's all you have drop to a do. like because that's going to give drop a like hit that like button watch the whole video leave a comment you know that sort of stuff but there's no need to be the opposite. Mm -hmm. You don't have to dislike a video just because, you know, oh, the broke nerd posted something controversial on, on Instagram. I'm going to go to all of his videos and hit that down button and tell him that he's stupid in the comments section. Which happens. You know, it's like, it does. It happens Dude, all the time. It absolutely does. I just had to block somebody on Instagram yesterday. Yeah. Yesterday. It's not fun. Because he commented on like three posts in a row. I'm, I'm assuming it's a he. I don't know. But they commented three posts in a row just negative crap mm -hmm. just negative crap and it's just like i can't have you here i can't have you yeah. here because i read your comments i see your comments a lot of people know this i respond to almost every single dm that i get Same. you know and it's it's we're there we see it yep. we know you're there I mean, you we're don't, small you know, creators I, we have the opportunity and the time to respond to to the comments yes. and the messages that come in Yep. Everyone, there's like a major influx. And this, so it's pretty crazy, but. <laughs> and the other thing that I want people to know uh, on YouTube in particular, or even just any content creation, you know, just because somebody else is succeeding, doesn't mean it's the reason why you're not. You know, like jealousy Facts. and things like that. There's, there's no portion. You know, so, so many people get upset because they think that somebody inferior to their content is growing faster than them. And it makes them upset, and it makes them leave bad comments, and it makes them, you know, quit making content in a lot of cases. Yeah. And I'll tell you guys this, the YouTube algorithm has nothing to do with that whatsoever. No, it's it's nothing weird. Nothing to do it's with weird. that. Well, I mean, like... It's so like, weird. Let's, it's unexplainable. Let's look, at, let's look at our relationship based off of that. Like, when I, yeah. when I slowed down or kind of stopped making content for a little while, I stayed at about 1,500 subscribers on YouTube. And where you yep. at now, you're over 3,000, right? Yep, so I very three. easily could have looked at you and been like, oh, dang, like, Travis is, like, skyrocketing, and he he's doing all of this stuff, and his content is blowing up, and mine's just stagnant, you know, not even taking into the yep. fact that I stopped making content. But I... Or anything else. I, I could have, or you didn't I could have just jumped into your videos and be like, no, dislike, I don't want him to grow, don't want him to grow, dislike, dislike, yep. dislike. Dude... Speaking of, why, why does every Pokemon content creator get a thumbs down in the first like five minutes of right. every single video posted? Who's Seriously. doing this? Who who has a program that's doing this? I, I mean, you, we can go like Illuminati I confirmed know, right? and be like, dude, Leonhart has this bot <laughs> <laughs> that's just holding small content creators I, down. I love that you choose Leonhart of all people. <laughs> Leonhart's the one that put <laughs> well, the he's, bot he's up. Well, he's the face of our community. Yeah, That's yeah. why I went with Leonhart. He's Hart. suppressing everybody. <laughs> he <laughs> exactly. wants to stay at the like, top. Like, you know, it's, does, 
Does Logan Paul have a bot with his thumbs down every single <laughs> video posted in the first five minutes? Oh my just gosh. Just to discourage people from making content? Like, Illuminati confirmed. Be Let's crazy. go. Be crazy. Be <laughs> crazy. But, like, who, who has the time to thumbs down every video that I post in the first five minutes? And it's not just me. It's almost all Pokemon content yeah, no, creators. Everyone. Their video goes up, and the first five minutes, there's a freaking thumbs down there. It's like, where? Wh- why are you here? Yeah. Well, I mean, we saw that for a while. You know, there's a few months yeah, where dude, every Pokemon content creator happening. had five dislikes the minute their video oh, was posted. Oh, that was bad. The minute their yeah. video was posted. Yep. Yep. Dude, the other day, my, my video I just posted last Friday, I you know, I always check to make sure that it uploaded properly when it goes live. So you, yeah. you, you open it up and you, and, you know, and you watch it just to make sure it looks good. It said, no views. One dislike. How, how does that happen? I'm like, that's how early it was. It was so early. No views, one dislike. So, like, it's definitely a yeah. bot. Like, but who has the notification bell on on my channel so they can smash that thumbs down the second it goes live? Like, what the heck is going Maybe on they here? just misheard you. Maybe they just misheard you. Right. Smash that thumbs up button. Oh, yeah, oh. smash the dislike button. I got you, bro. Yeah, I'll do I that. You, I'll take care yeah, of it. Dislike. I got you. All right. And while I'm here, I'm gonna I'm gonna post a link to my naughty website down there, <laughs> all over the place. <laughs> Those spam all comments place. driving me nuts. All right. <laughs> so this was this this podcast was a little bit all over the place. I know I had a hard time expressing how I really yeah. feel. Um, you did a much better oh, job dude, than I, I did. I disagree. I think you did way better. <laughs> <laughs> See, we're both kind of like, yeah. yeah. There's so much more I want to say, but I didn't say it right. Um. But yeah, I mean, we might do we might do another follow up to this podcast uh, here in the near future. We have all kinds of stuff. I mean, we can do an entire episode on content creation. We can do an entire episode on just the community in general. Uh, if you're on YouTube, let us know in the comment section what you guys would like to hear. Um, what did you agree with today? What did you disagree with today? Um, but I definitely think this is a, a topic that would be worth revisiting just every so often to see what has changed yeah. and things like that. What do you think? I, I definitely agree. I think we should definitely follow up with this in the future just because the, the community is changing. Like every single week something is is changing in the community. It's, it's crazy, so, isn't it? It's so weird. So weird. And so just kind of being able to revisit, yeah. come back, see what's what's changed would be awesome. I think we definitely do it. Because I feel like it wasn't like that before. It's definitely a lot more volatile now. Not only is the card market volatile, the, the content creation is volatile, the community is volatile, the people are volatile. You never know. You never so, know when somebody's going to blow up and just start trashing people. It's true. Or blow up in a good way, you know? You never know who could be the top dog yeah, in six true. months. It happens. Um, a lot of people, dude, there's been like two or three content creators that have just exploded over the past six, seven Seriously. months. Like it's strictly crazy. in the Pokemon it's community. It's awesome. It's great to see. And... It's it's definitely awesome because I give them all props. Most of them are much better at editing than me. That's something I yeah, need to work hey, on. Same, same. <laughs> but I gotta I gotta edit a lot better. Um, but we got a couple questions from social media guys. We like to use the end of our podcast to go over some questions that you guys ask us. So follow us on Instagram, Twitter. Um, that's where we get our questions from at TCG Funhouse and at the Broke Nerd. Uncooled Water over on Instagram wants to know. What is your favorite Pokemon set of all time? Broke Nerd, what is yours? My favorite set of all time. Honestly, it's anything from the Neo yes. generations. Neo Destiny, Neo nice. Discovery, Neo Revelation. I'm, I'm, I'm blanking. You no, know, that's just because they did yeah. a lot of focus on Syndicate. It's true. I mean, hey, hey, you caught me. You caught me red handed. <laughs> hey, hey. Them Johto yeah, Pokemans. I'm, I'm a you huge know, them Johto Johto's. fan. Cyndaquil's my favorite Pokemon. I have too much Cyndaquil <laughs> stuff. I showed you I just picked up another Typhlosion card. Did just you picked did? up another one. You it's did. a beauty. It was dope, yeah. though. It is a beauty. It's an E Series one, card. reverse awesome. hollow. Oh, ooh. It's so nice. It's so shiny. Yeah. Good so condition, too. Anything from Neo. All right, I'm going to go. I'm going to go Team wow. Rocket. Solid. So Team Rocket, um, first Team Rocket. Not Team Rocket Returns. Not Team Rocket Returns, which Team Rocket Returns is Classic. a good set too. It's a, it's another good set. Uh, but Team Rocket, with the introduction of the dark mm-hmm. Pokemon, the dark Blastoise, the dark Top. Charizard, like those are some of my favorite sets, um, our favorite cards of all time, period. I love the dark Pokemon. Um, I liked the hollow patterns. Um, the swirls were mm-hmm. very prevalent in you know the Team Rocket and stuff, so... I have a couple of Dark Charizards that have 
beautiful swirls like right there. Awesome. And it's just, we just picked up the first edition Dark Charizard Hollow. Awesome. Yeah, dude, that's we just amazing. got it in a stream the other that's day. Dope. It was great. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. That's such a beautiful card. I love it so much. Very underrated I Charizard agree. card. I Very agree. underrated. Everyone goes. Everyone goes base set. And all the shinies and all that stuff. Dude, yeah. I, I like If you guys are ever looking Charizard for them for on sure. TCG Player, Dark Charizard, lightly played, non hollow. It's about $35. Yeah, the non hollow is a great value. Non hollow is a great value. It's about great 35 value. bucks. If you guys are looking for yep. one, go pick it up, put it in your binder. Sure. It's not in the best condition, but it's all great. Right. But no, hey, it's a yeah. binder copy. It's what it is. You know, it's nostalgia. All right, Modern Day Pokemon, also over on Instagram, wants to know, what are your guys' top five Pokemon cards from 2020? Top five. <laughs> top That's a, five. Let's, so you give a couple, and I'll give a couple, so we each right, only right, have right. five. Let's do I'll, that. I'll, I'll give two. I'll give two here. I think, uh, Let's I think, go. well, I guess I could probably give three. Mine are all from Rebel Clash, surprisingly, okay. which everybody hates. <laughs> I don't know why. The one I set that nobody set wants. Nobody wants. <laughs> My three favorite cards from 2020 are from that set, and I don't know why everybody hates it. I love Rebel Clash. I can open Rebel Clash all day. All right. Uh, you got to tell me right. what they are. So what are they The now? two Milotic cards, the Milotic V Full Art, and the well, Milotic V Non-Full Art, the regular. Just awesome. The artwork yeah. is stunning. Dude, the blue, the blue oh, and pink on that Milotic V, the artwork on that beauty. is absolutely amazing. Beauty. I and love that And the green, card, green is my favorite color. I just love it. It's amazing. You know, it's hot. And then the yeah. other one is the Toxtricity it's V full art. Toxtricity V. Toxtricity is my third favorite Pokemon yeah. since it came out. I just love poison types. Really? Overall, like third overall? Favorite. That's cool. I love dude. poison and electric type cool. Pokemon, and this is one of the very few that they have that are combined. That's poison and electric. So yep. just super, super pumped about it. Love him. It's great. Good choice. So. I like Toxtricity. He's probably my favorite Galar. Yeah. I, I, I like Dragapult and Toxtricity. Those are probably my two favorite Galar Pokemon. Grimmsnarl yeah. is okay. He gets a little weird True. at the end True. there, but <laughs> he's cool. He's cool too. Um, all right, so I'll give you a couple. So that's three. I'll give you a couple. Um, Don't say Charizard. Man, I'm going to go like Vivid Voltage <laughs> here. So the Alakazam Full Art beautiful card i absolutely love the alakazam full art with a little the browns and the pink from the gold it's almost like a gold mm. card that's not a that's gold so card you know um yeah dude the value on it is not crazy you can pick it up for like yeah. five six bucks right now like it's a, it's it's a really nice card um and actually the, my other card that i really like is very similar to it and that's the sizer mm -hmm. full art so the sizer full art actually looks very similar to the alakazam does, full does. art um but I just love them both. They're two of my favorite Pokemon that I feel have been like underrated for I mean, I guess Alakazam's never been underrated per se. He was way OP black back in red and blue, but um yeah, so Sizor and Alakazam, I'm super glad that they got full arts and stuff like that already. So like super pumped with that. I collect both of their cards like as separate binders. Like I have a Sizor binder and Alakazam nice. binder, so filled up entire pages with those full arts because I love, love, love those cards so much um so yeah that's really cool and uh, and i think we can both agree that the full art trainers have amazing. really taken a step up in 2020 for sword and shield um so any full art trainer Seriously. in 2020 is is collectible i in agree 100 agree even hop <laughs> no not we hop. just talked about how everyone amazing else. hop was <laughs> Every, every, everyone else. No, well, you can we send me all of the hops. I the I'll time. take every hop card because <laughs> he's 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 the goat. You, you know, to put it lightly. You you send me all the hops, but dude, dude, like the the full art Nessa. It is that card awesome. is amazing. The full art Leon, both of those cards from from Vivid Voltage, mm -hmm. absolutely stunning full art cards. Like I love yep. them. They're good. They're awesome. Good stuff. Cool. All right, so. We have come to the end of the podcast here, guys. We had a pretty spicy conversation. Uh, I know I stumbled over some words and all that kind of stuff, but hey, we talked about the changes in the Pokemon community and the changes that have happened from just being a Pokemon content creator. Let me know in the comment sections. I may have said some controversial things that mm, people may not like very much, um, but I mean, it's reality and it's my opinions, you know? Hopefully you guys don't like unfollow me or anything like that or unsubscribe because you don't like some of the things I said because honestly I think they're all I'm pretty truthful right at this point. Unsubscribe. Unfollow. Um, you <laughs> would. I'll just follow you right back. You would. I already did it to you, so it's all good. You know, it's a 
thanks for catching up. But yeah, guys, so if you're on YouTube, smash that like button for me and hit that subscribe button. We're here every single Wednesday at 2 p.m. on YouTube. And uh, Matt, where can you find us on uh, the podcast Pretty much anywhere side? you can find podcasts.